Okay, here we go. Get ready to start the semester one exam review. So we have our review sheet, 10 questions on it. First question, they give us a triangle, a white triangle. We want all four trig functions. Okay, so we have four, theta, it's a right angle, and three. Okay, we need to find the third side right here. Be careful, you might think this is a three, four, five triangle. This can't be five because this is the hypotenuse is here, and the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So if that was five, that would be the longer side. So I don't know what this is, but it's less than four. Okay, so we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find x. We want an exact value here. So our a and b are three and x. <coughs> Excuse me. Three squared plus x squared equals four squared. Nine plus x squared is 16. Right, nine from each side. x squared is 16 minus nine, which is seven. Square root, and we get plus or minus the square root of seven, but we're talking length, so it's just the positive square root of seven. So I want this angle right here. I want all six trig functions, six trig functions, sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, cotangent, secant, and cosecant of theta. Okay, remember Sokotoa, S-O-H, C-A-H, T-O-A, you have to have that memorized. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, so radical seven over four. Cosecant, flip that, be four over radical seven times the top and bottom by radical 7, we get rid of the radical on the bottom. On bottom we have radical 7 which is radical 7, which is radical 49, which is 7. Under 4 times radical 7 is 4 radical 7. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent 3 over hypotenuse 4, 3 over 4, so secant is 4 over 3, just flip it. And tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so radical 7 over 3. Flip that to get cotangent, it's 3 over radical 7. Again, times by radical 7 on top and bottom, we get rid of the radicals on the bottom. Radical 7 times radical 7 is 7. 3 times radical 7 is 3 radical 7. Okay. All right. 2, 3, and 4 says no calculators, okay? We talked about co-functions, okay? Co-functions. So six different functions. Sine and cosine are co-functions. Tangent and cotangent are co-functions. Cosecant and secant are co-functions, okay? So what we also have, you might have written on the back of the unit circle, I asked you to do that, um, is that complements Co-functions are the same. Okay. So for example, if I gave you these two co-functions, sine and cosine, if I gave you the sine of five degrees, that equals the cosine of, well what complements number after 90 degrees? What adds up to 90 degrees if we have five? 85 degrees. I have no idea what either one of those are. But they're the same. Same with, for example, tangent and cotangent. I can give you tangent and cotangent. If I gave you a 40 degree angle and a 50 degree angle, for example. Again, I don't know what those are, but they're the same because they're complementary angles. They add up to 90, and these are co-functions, okay? Um, if I give you something such as this, secant of 10 equals the cosine of 80. Those are complementary angles, 10 and 80 add up to 90, but these are not co-functions. Secant and cosecant are not co-functions, secant and cosecant. Secant and cosine are not co-functions, secant and cosecant are. So in order to make that a true statement, I would have to make that was cosine, that would be sine, okay? Or other ways I could have given the correct answer. Okay, so that's what we need to know in order to do this question. So what you want to do is you want to have the same angle if at all possible. So question number two, it says, it says the no calculators. I'm going to trust that you guys are not going to use a calculator. Okay, so these are co-functions, sine and cosine. Those are co-functions, and these are complementary angles because they have to 90 degrees. Therefore, these are the same. So if I really wanted to, since these are the same, I could say that this is the same as the cosine of 43 degrees. It's a cosine of 43 degrees. Again, I have no idea what the cosine of 43 degrees is. But when it's subtracted from itself, you get zero. You want to have the angles be the same. Or I could have made them both sine of 47. It doesn't matter. There's more than one way you could do these. Number three, tangent of 10 over the cotangent of 80. Again, these are cofunctions. Tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. These are complementary. They add up to 90. So these are the same, okay? So if they're the same, where I see this, I can put that, or where I see that, I can put this, it doesn't matter. So I'm, instead of tangent of 10, I can just say it's the same as the cotangent of 80. Over the same thing, cotangent of 80. This way the angles are the same. You divide something by itself, you get one. And number four, tangent of 80 minus cosine of 10 over the cosine of 80. Okay, I want all the angles the same. We have 80, 80, and 10. Well. I could rewrite the cosine of 10. Well, the cosine of 10 is the same as the, where the hell do I have that printed? Okay, the 
cosine of 10 is the same as the sine of 80. The sine and cosine are co-functions. 10 and 80 are complementary angles. So I could say that's the same as the sine of 80. The sine of 80 and the cosine of 10 are the same number. Whatever they are, they're the same. Okay, therefore, all these angles are the same. Sine over cosine is tangent, as long as the angles are the same, and they are now. So this is the same as the tangent of 80. And we still have the tangent of 80 out front here. Again, I have no idea what the tangent of 80 is. If I take the tangent of 80, whatever it is, take away the tangent of 80, you get zero. Okay? Okay, that was question four. Question five and six. Okay, there's different ways you can do these, okay? There are different ways you could do these. You could use the law of sines or the law of cosines. It doesn't matter. It's not the way I taught you, okay? It's not the way I taught you. If you want to, you can. Most of you in the class wanted to use the law of sines and law of cosines to solve these. Okay, but when we did this worksheet, that's not the way I had you guys do them, okay? So, what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna draw a triangle, it's a right triangle. Remember, use the law of sines and law of cosines when they are non-right triangles, okay? You can use them for right triangles as well. So I'm gonna draw a picture here. So we have a right triangle. We have A here. Well, let's take some of the other way around, because I always had, I always had you put C on the right-hand side. So it doesn't matter. A, there's B, there's C. C is 90, we know that. Uh, B is 10 degrees, and little B is 4, okay? So, I want to find capital A next. I mean, if, if this is 90, these two together have to have 90 because they have to have the 180. This has to be 80. I'm not going to show my work. You shouldn't have to show your work on that either. You should have it in your head, okay? All right, so, um, let's do this. I want to find little a and little c, okay? I'm going to find little a first. I'm going to find little a. It doesn't matter if I use angle B or angle A. It doesn't matter, okay? I'm going to use angle B, okay? But I want to find little A, I want to use this side. I don't want to use this side because I don't know what it is. So we're going to use this side and this side. So this is opposite and this is adjacent. So we're going to use tangent. So tangent of 10 degrees equals the opposite 4 over A. Opposite over adjacent. Now, we talked about this. I showed you a little trick. If you want to so solve this and A is on bottom, I showed you a little trick that you could just flip-flop these things. So the exact value for this is a equals 4 over the tangent of 8, or tangent of 10. Just switch spots here. Then we type in A equals, type in 4 over the tangent of 10. And I'll type that, well, I'll type in right now with heck. Make sure you're in degree mode. You're definitely going to need calculators on this test. 4 divided by the tangent of 10. And it'd give me about two decimal places. It'd be 22.69. So, okay. Now, Let's find C. I'm gonna stick with B right here, okay? So if I wanna find C, I'm gonna use this side and this side. I'm not gonna use this side because that's a decimal and it's not exact, okay? This is an exact value. So I'm gonna use this and this. So this is opposite my hypotenuse, so it's the sine. The sine of 10 degrees. And again, if you're wondering which angle you know how to use, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, the sine of 10 is opposite over hypotenuse, four over C. Again, switch spots here. C equals four over the sine of 10. Type in 4 divided by the sine of 10. You're going to get about 23.04. Okay. And you don't have to do this, but I usually check to make sure these look reasonable. This is the biggest angle. That's definitely the biggest side. That's the biggest, or smallest angle, smallest side. That's in the middle. That's the middle side. Okay. Again, if you want to use the law of sines, you could. Number six, another right triangle. So again, let's draw a right triangle. A, B, and C. They tell us C is 90. Little a is 2. Little b is 8. So that's supposed to be an 8. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem here in order to find this side. So 2 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. Okay? We didn't use Pythagorean theorem back here because we only had one side. We didn't have the other two sides. So we have 4 plus 64 is C squared. Add them together, you get 68. The square root. Take the square root of 68, which is approximately 8.25. Okay, so 8.25. Now I want to find capital A and capital B. I'm going to use capital A first, okay? And the sides I want to use are these two sides, because that's a decimal plus the fraction sign. So I'm going to use A, it's opposite and adjacent, so tangent, tangent of A. 2 over 8. Okay, the way you solve for that is you take the inverse tangent of two eighths. Type in 
the inverse tangent of the calculator of 2x. Okay, we'll do that. We have 14.04. This is about 14.04 degrees. Okay, we're going to find V. Simple enough. If this is 90, these two together have to add to 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180. So I could just take 90 minus 14.04. Or again, you could add these together and subtract 180. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Do that. You put in 6, 75, 100 degrees. Okay. Degrees. Okay. Those are the first six questions. On the back. On the back, you have to use the law of sines and law of cosines. None of these triangles are going to be two triangles, and none of these triangles are going to be no solution. They're all going to have exactly one answer. Exactly one. Okay? So... Let's work through these. I will not give you the law of sines. You have to have that memorized. The law of cosines, I will give you the law of cosines. Okay. So, work through these. It's not racing very well. Okay, so number seven. We always draw our picture. Okay, we have A, we have B, we have C. A is 50 degrees, C is 20 degrees. Is three. Okay, we can use the law of sines because we know both A's. Okay, plus we can find B right now. I'm not going to show my work here, but these add up to 70, subtract that 180, you get 110 degrees. So you got to find little b and little c. I'm going to find little b first, then little c. It doesn't matter. I usually do them alphabetically. Here's the two that you know. We know both A's. So the sine of 50 degrees over 3 equals the sine of 110 degrees over B. And then we cross multiply and divide. This times this, whatever that is, divide by that. So we type that in. 3 sine 110. Divide by the sine of 50. We get 3.68. 3.68. Okay. And then we want to find little c. So again, I'm going to use the sine of 50 over 3. Equals the sine of 20 over c. So again, we type in 3 sine 20, whatever that is, divided by the sine of 50. Excuse me. 3 sine 20, divided by sine of 50. So you get 1.34. And again, you don't have to do this, but we have our biggest angle, that's definitely our biggest side. Uh, that's our smallest angle, that's the smallest side, so yep, there we go. Question number 8. signs because you know both B's. If you know both A's or both B's or both C's, you can use the law of sines. If you don't, we have to use the law of cosines. So we've got to find little a, big A, big C. Okay? So let's do this. Let's find, um, we'll have to find little C first. We can't find A's because we don't know either one of them. So let's find little big C first. So the sine of 40 degrees over 4 equals the sine of C over 3. Okay, so cross multiply, 3 sine 40, whatever that is, divide by 4. Okay, so let's type that in, what do we have here? So 3 sine 40, divide by 4, we get approximately 0.482, equals the sine of C. Don't clear your screen, take the second, to get rid of, to get C by itself, to get rid of that sine, Take the inverse sign of each side. So take the inverse sign of that answer. So second sign, second answer button equals, you get about 28.82. Let's use about 28.82. Okay, and then I can find capital A. We can add these up. Plus 40, that's 68.82. And subtract 180. So 180 minus 68.82. You do that, you get uh, 
let's take the sine of this over this, the sine of 40 degrees over 4. We don't really want to use this, but we have to in order to find that. It's an approximation in a decimal, but we have, we have to use it. So the sine of approximately 111.18. Divide by uh, of four or a hey, four geez we're working from okay so we type in four times this divided by that okay so we type in four sine one 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 point one eight equals divide by the sine of forty you get about five point eight zero again you don't have to do this but biggest angle biggest side uh, smallest angle smallest side works out. That doesn't prove that we did it right, but if your biggest angle is not across from your biggest side, your smallest angle is not across from your small side, <coughs> then you know you definitely messed up. Okay. Two more. Okay. So, number nine. They give us A is two, C is one, and B is ten degrees. Okay, they don't give us both A's or both B's or both C's. So you've got to use the law of cosines. I will give this to you. Law of cosines is law of cosines. Little a squared equals little b squared plus little c squared minus 2 little b little c cosine capital A. Or little b squared equals little a squared plus little c squared minus 2ac cosine big B. Little c squared equals little a squared plus little b squared minus 2ab cosine capital C different ways of saying the same thing, okay? So let's draw our picture here. Okay, there's capital A, capital B, <coughs> excuse me, capital Z. So little a is two, little c is one, b is 10 degrees, okay? So we gotta find capital A, capital C, and little b. So since we know angle 10, we're gonna start off finding little b. So we're gonna use this formula right here. So little b squared equals a squared plus c squared, so two squared plus one squared times two times two times one times a cosine of angle B, which is 10 degrees. So we have four plus one minus two times two times one is four, cosine of 10 degrees. Four plus one is five, so five minus four, cosine 10. Do not subtract, these are make one. You always multiply 40 times. So just type in five minus the cosine of, five minus four cosine 10 degrees. And you get, 1.06, we square root that, so second function, square root, second function, answer, so you still want 1, 1.03. Okay, so little b is 1.03. Okay, so this one, and then we got to find out uh, capital A and capital C, it doesn't matter, I'm going to find capital A first, I'll find capital A, we're going to use this one. So 2 squared equals b squared, which is 1.03 squared plus 1 squared times 2 times 1.03 times 1 times the cosine of capital A. 4 equals 1.03 squared plus about 1.06 plus 1 minus 2 times 1.03 times 1 is 2.06 cosine capital A. Use that up to 2.06. I'm going to subtract 2.06. 4 minus 2.06 is 1.94 equals negative 2.06 cosine capital A divided by negative 2.06 divided by negative 2.06. Look at that. We divide that out. 1.94 divided by negative 2.06. Do that. You get about negative 0.94. One seven. Take the inverse cosine of that. About 160 degrees. A is 160.35 degrees. That's right. And then to find capital C, leave that up, subtract 180, so 160.35 plus 10 is 170.35. 180 minus 170.35 is 9.65. Okay, so biggest angle, biggest side, smallest angle, smallest side barely, a little bit bigger side, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger angle, a little bit bigger side. So these are these are very, very close because these two angles are very, very close. Okay? So that makes sense. Okay. 
Okay. One more problem. Number 10. Okay, this time they give us little a, little b, little c. So little a is 4, little b is 3, this is 6. Okay? All right, so I'm going to find capital A first. I'm going to use this formula. So 4 squared equals 3 squared plus 6 squared. There's 2, there's 3 times 6, cosine of capital A. 16 equals 9 plus 36 minus 2 times 3 times 6 is 36. Cosine capital A. 9 and 36 is 45. Subtract 45 from each side. 16 minus 45 is negative 29. Things cancel. Divide by negative 36. Do that. The cosine of capital A equals negative 29 divided by negative 36. Second function cosine, second function answer, take the inverse cosine. Do that again about 36.34. 36.34 degrees. Okay. Let's find capital B. So we're going to find capital B. We start off with little b squared equals little a squared plus little c squared times 2 times 4 times 6 cosine of capital B. 9 equals 16 plus 36 times 2 times 4 times 6 is 48. Cosine capital B. 16 and 36 is 52, so subtract 52 on each side. To do that, you get 9 minus 52, which is negative 43. These are gone. We're left with negative 48. Cosine capital B. Divide by negative 48. Divide by negative 48. Okay, so take 43 divided by 48. Negative 43 divided by negative 48. To do that, you get about 0.896. So 0.896 equals the cosine of capital B. And then we take the inverse cosine of that in order to get B by itself. So second cosine, second answer. Do that about 26.38. B is 26.38 degrees, about. Okay, and then to find the third angle, add these up, subtract 180. So 26.38 plus 36.34. Do that, you get. 62.72, 180 minus 62.72, 112.28, I think. 112.28, okay. Uh, yep, 112.28. Okay, that's it. All right.